years ago, one day shy, Her Excellency Lucy Kibaki left us in the month of April. Five days ago, His Excellency Emilio Mwai Kibaki has left us. Mr. Speaker, perhaps this is the Almighty's way of demonstrating their enduring love for each other. As the Bible says, till death did them part. We all know and accept that the Honorable Mwai Kibaki was not only the longest serving member of parliament by the time he died, but also the most experienced. We can debate about many things, but we all accept that having been plucked by Jaramogi Ogingo Dinga from the blushed serenity of Makerere to come and serve as the executive officer of Kanu, he remained steadfast and he remained committed to this country. He was definitely a gentleman of Kenyan politics, gentlemanly to the point of being mistaken for a fence-sitter. But, Mr. Speaker, we all know that behind that gentility was a very careful, calculating, but principled man, a man whose integrity is not easy to question, a man who, when some of his friends brought or sought to bring his integrity to question, he had the courage to release them. This is the man, Mr. Speaker, whose focus was not only on the economy, but also on democratic space, on meritocracy, and later on constitutional reforms. His legacy is superb, a legacy that was nearly blotted in 2007, when some of his handlers led him to a process that he was not fully persuaded of, aided by the judiciary at the time. To his credit, and recognizing that, he accepted the subsequent process of reconciliation, a reconciliation that ended up in a government of national unity. Together with the right honorable prime minister, they were able to steer this country to a situation of unity that had not been seen before, to exponential growth, and to put the foundations for legislative and constitutional reform. Mr. Speaker, I am proud to have been one of the beneficiaries of the four organs of reform, that is the Committee of Experts. Today I wear the insignia of the elder of the burning spear, which His Excellency Mwai Kibaki was able to accord me for my service to the country in writing the Constitution way before the age of 40, based purely on meritocracy. Mr. Speaker, I had the opportunity to serve as the first ombudsman of this republic at the time that Mwai Kibaki was president, and I can confirm that the entire process was purely based on merit. Both in the committee of experts and as the ombudsman, there was no single day that the president sought to, ex to exert undue pressure, or as the lawyers say, to do our work with let and hindrance. He respected principle, he respected meritocracy, and he allowed in independent institutions to do their work. This is a man to be emulated, Mr. Speaker, and there are lessons to be learned. In his humility in deputizing the commander-in-chief, in his humility in restraint of want and greed, and his principle to walk away when he thought there were differences of principle, these are things to be emulated today, Mr. Speaker, by all that are listening and all that are praising Mwai Kibaki. But above all, Mr. Speaker, his commitment to his country before self is unquestionable. Mwai Kibaki say, pass our regards to J.M. Kariuki, Tom Boya, Jomo Kinyata, Jaramogi Ogingo Dinga, John Silva, and the others before us. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.